Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. In this video, I want to answer two related questions. First, how much of a difference does the microphone preamplifier make on the overall sound quality of a recording? And second, what's a better use of money? Having an inexpensive preamp with an expensive microphone or having an expensive preamp with an inexpensive microphone. What's the better investment? All right, so to demonstrate this idea, I've set up a very non-scientific test. I recorded myself on a bunch of my microphones going through one preamp, and then recorded myself going through a different preamp. So these are not the same takes, therefore they're not side-by-side -side perfect comparisons, but I think some of the ideas are still going to translate. My two preamps in question here are the Slate VMS-1, which I would consider one of the better preamps within the cheaper family. So you can get these for around 300 to 350 bucks, and for that budget, this is one of the better preamps that you can get. My other preamp is going to be an Avalon M5, which is in the mid-price range. It's anywhere between about 1100 and 1500 bucks, depending on where you get it. Uh, you have to get them secondhand now because I don't believe that they're being made and the new ones are like 1800 and no. Uh, but in that price range, I think that the Avalon M5 is one of the best picks available. So two different leagues of preamps, but both very good preamps in their own right. And then for microphones, I set up uh, four of them, but I, I think we're really only are going to need to listen to three to really get the idea. On the inexpensive side, I have a dynamic microphone and I have a condenser microphone. The reason why I wanted to include both is because on price scale, you typically get more bang for your buck going with dynamic microphones over condenser microphones. They just are much cheaper in general, even for the really high-end ones. You can get a fantastic dynamic microphone for like, tops like 800 bucks, whereas the same quality equivalent in condenser microphones would be like 10,000. So it's really, really very different. But I wanted to make sure to have a cheaper condenser microphone as well. So my Dynamic is an Electro Voice ND468, which ran me, I think, 120 bucks when I got it. I think they're about 150 now, 160 now, something like that. And then for my cheaper condenser microphone, I have an Audio-Technica 4033A, and those are also, yeah, those are about $300, I think, more or less. Uh, both very, very good microphones for their price tag. Now, on the more expensive side, I have my Neumann M147. Uh, retail, I think they're around three grand. You can typically pick them up secondhand for around like 23, 2400. So we're talking about a magnitude of like 10X in terms of the price tag. So let's listen to these down. I think I want to start with the M147. So let's listen to that going through the Slate VMS-1 preamp. This is a Neumann M147 on the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Now let's check the Avalon M5. This is a Neumann M147 now going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. I'm going to play them again. One thing that I want to generalize in my experience, and this is very non-scientific, so feel free to argue with me in the comments section below. You might be right. I find that particularly high-end condensers or better build condensers I don't hear as much of a difference between different preamps, even when you're talking about very large gaps in price tag. Let's listen again one more time. This is a Neumann M147 on the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. This is a Neumann M147 now going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. So there definitely is a little bit of a difference. I do notice that there is a little bit more polish in the top end on the Avalon M5, and I do feel that the low end is a little bit more focused. Part of this is because we're getting a slightly different frequency curve from these two. Uh, the slate is designed to be extremely neutral, and to our ears, neutral tends to sound dull, whereas the Avalon is deliberately colored a little bit, it's supposed to sound a little polished. And so there's a little bit of raise in the upper mids and treble. But even with that said, like if I were to EQ them to be a little bit more similar, 
uh, you would notice that there's a little bit more grain and less, like it's not as smooth and dimensional when I do this with the slate. This is a Neumann M147 on the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. This is a Neumann M147 now going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. A little tricky to level match, but the actual quality of the upper range and top end is just a little bit nicer, but not that big of a difference, actually, in my mind. Not a huge difference. Now, let's move on to the cheaper stuff. So here is our Audio-Technica 4033A going through the Slate preamp. This is an Audio-Technica 4033A going through the Slate VMS. And now the Avalon M5. This is an Audio-Technica 4033A going through an Avalon M5 preamp. I feel like I notice a bit more of a difference here. I'm not really sure what mechanism is causing that, but I definitely hear a pop in the upper range that I I don't hear the same way on the slate. It's Everything becomes a little bit bigger sounding pretty immediately with the Avalon M5. I'll play it again. Uh, there's definitely some plosives in this. I didn't want to record these with a pop guard because I wanted to capture the full sound of the microphone uh, and also the way that the microphone reacts to plosives is going to be part of the sound of the microphone. So I maybe I regret that decision a little bit, to be honest, but let's listen. This is an Audio-Technica 4033A going through the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. This is an Audio-Technica 4033A going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. It's a much bigger sound to my ear. I, I feel like I'm getting better definition on the transients, and so it sounds more detailed. I'm getting a much better representation of the upper range and treble, and so I would say this is pretty fairly noticeable. Okay, let's jump over to our Electrovoice ND468. This is a dynamic microphone. Here's the slate. This is an Electrovoice ND468 on the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. This is an Electrovoice ND468 going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. So overall, I would say here I noticed the biggest difference. And I this this is very non-scientific again. So again, arguments are, are totally open and welcome here. But I have tended to notice that the, the mark of the preamp is a little bit more distinct, particularly on dynamic microphones. Uh, like an SM7B, I feel like the quality of the preamp, the color, and the overall quality both have a much more dramatic effect than on something like a U47. Uh, let's play this one more time. Let's do the Slate and the M5. This is an Electrovoice ND468 on the Slate VMS preamp. This is an Electrovoice ND468 going through an Avalon M5 preamp. I should mention, by the way, that I have taken the time to try to balance these and level match these as best as possible, as best as two different takes can be, which is why you see some of these like little regions with different game staging or well levels put in. Um, it's level matched. I I kept having to second guess myself that I was not level matching correctly because it sounds bigger. The ND four sixty eight distinctly sounds bigger going through the Avalon M five in a way that the Neumann M one forty seven didn't sound. So what's my conclusion in terms of how much does the preamp impact the overall sound quality of a recording? I think it depends on the microphone to an extent. I think that it will always be noticeable, but sometimes it's not as necessary to have the best preamp in the world as other times. You can usually get away 
with a less expensive preamp, and as long as your microphone is good for the source, it's still going to come out pretty good. Uh, but that discards really garbage preamps. The preamps that are built into your typical interfaces, like little travel interfaces and things like that, are usually some of the worst sounding pieces of audio. Not even just preamps, but like any audio ever. Uh, and so that will make a big difference, I find. Uh, not to name any particular ones, but basically any interface, really. There's very few that actually sound anywhere even close to what the Slate is doing at 300 bucks. Um, now, the next question here is, what's a better investment? Having a more expensive preamp with a less expensive microphone or vice versa? This is a little harder to answer because sometimes inexpensive microphones and inexpensive preamps can be very good, sometimes even better than the expensive ones. So you can't necessarily qualify things strictly by dollar signs. So it's a very ambiguous question to ask, although certainly a lot of people have asked. But let's check it out. Let's say we have our ND468. Well, actually, let's do oranges to oranges a little bit more. Uh, and do the Audio-Technica 4033A going through the Avalon, and then compare that to the Neumann M147 going through the Slate. This is an Audio-Technica 4033A going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. This is a Neumann M147 on the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. Okay, one more time. I think my levels are a little bit off too. Let's gain this up maybe like half a dB or a dB. I think that's going to be a little bit more accurate. So one more time here, Avalon M5 Audio-Technica 4033A. This is an Audio-Technica 4033A going through an Avalon M5 preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. And M147 going through the Slate. This is a Neumann M147 on the Slate VMS preamp. She sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. So I would say it kind of depends on what we're expecting to get out of it. The upper range is smoother on the Audio-Technica 4033A, and the upper mids, I think, are more focused and better represented on the Audio-Technica 4033A when going through the Avalon M5. The low end, I think, is better still in the M147 going through the Slate, I think just because the M147 has a much better low end overall. I think that a well-matched, less expensive microphone with a better preamp is going to get you further than a cheaper preamp and a more expensive microphone. So what I mean by that is if you know what your source sound sounds like, and you can pick a microphone that's going to work very well with that source, that microphone might not be so expensive. You might be able to pick that microphone for the source and focus a little bit more money on the preamp and overall get a better result, whereas just throwing money at a microphone but completely ignoring the preamp quality is not really going to be very helpful. And this is going to be exacerbated if you have something like a really expensive microphone and you're just using your interface preamps, your built-in interface preamps. Of course, ideally, you know, you have the absolute best microphone for the source and the best preamp, and it's the color you want. I will also say this. When you get into the higher range of preamps, you don't really get so much of a, f of a fidelity difference. Like, you don't, you don't really hear, like, quality missing in any way, shape, or form. You really just end up getting, like, a different array of colors. And so you have more flexibility to like not have the perfect preamp as long as it's just generally a good one. Whereas matching a microphone to a source, I think is a little bit more important. All right. I, I hope that answered these questions. It's not an easy question to answer, especially that second one. Uh, but that's the best answer that I can give. 
So if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification. The low end tutorial still free. If you sign up for the newsletter, go get that. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.